Your Excellencies, Your Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, and dear friends. We come to a very special moment. Uh, the Crystal Award Ceremony at the start of every annual meeting is, since many years is um, a very privileged moment for all of us. Our late friend, Lord Yehudi Menuhin, was a great inspiration for this event. And we still cherish his memory and the time when we decided to honor artists and cultural leaders who not only excel in their respective art, but also contribute to humankind in the sense of the motto of the World Economic Forum, improving the state of the world. Many of you probably remember the extraordinary personalities that we had on this stage in the last couple of years. Tonight, I have again the pleasure of presenting to you three outstanding artists. And I will start with Charmin Obaichinoy. Charmin Obaichinoy began her career by writing at the age of 14 to contribute to critical conversation in Pakistan. She was always interested in telling stories about marginalized communities. She has worked with refugees, women's advocate groups, and human rights defenders. By bringing their voices to the outside world, she has often helped them bring about a critical change in their communities. Sharmina Bai Chinoy has made over a dozen award-winning films in over 10 countries. Documentaries concerning Pakistan, like Saving Face in 2012, with which she brought acid-related violence against women to the world stage, but also about women in Saudi Arabia, the Philippines, South Africa, always showing gender oppression and social injustice. Her Oscar award has made arts, culture, and filmmaking more legitimate professions for youth in Pakistan. Sharmin, would you please join me on stage? for this great honor. Indeed, these are difficult times for people like myself in countries like Pakistan. Those of us who want to create change are systematically being silenced. And people often ask me, why do I continue to live in a country like Pakistan? And I say that because I have seen the power of film. I have seen how film can transform lives and how it can impact legislation, how it can impact the communities that struggle every day. Last year, a film I made, Saving Face, won the Academy Award, and it influenced legislation in Pakistan. In the province of Punjab, which is the largest uh, province in terms of population, it influenced legislation in a way that now acid violence is a crime that is being treated as a terrorism crime and people are being sent to jail. But in a country like Pakistan, where we have few and far between heroes, people that the young generation can look up to, I find that film has been able to empower people who are creating grassroots change, empower them by giving them a voice. In the last 12 months, I've profiled the lives of six people across Pakistan, some educated, some not educated, who are risking their lives every day to create change. And through those films, those men and women have got funding, have got acceptability, and a voice now. And so I feel like, as a filmmaker, my mission now is not only to expose the things that are happening around the world, but also to become the voice for all those who cannot bring forward their message. Thank you.
Charlie Theron. Charlie Theron won an Academy Award for Best Actress, a Golden Globe for Best Actress, <clears throat> The Silver Bear, and many, many more awards. She played in a wide range of movies and is recognized as a great professional and versatile actress. But today she is with us in yet another capacity. <clears throat> she is a United Nations messenger of peace. As a native of South Africa, she has seen firsthand the devastation that HIV and AIDS have caused throughout Sub-Saharan Africa, which has 5.6 million people living with HIV AIDS and more than 2 million orphans. Charlize Theron founded the Africa Outreach Project with the mission to keep African youth safe from HIV by providing health education and screening at mobile health centers, voluntary testing and counseling. The project is committed to support community-engaged organizations that address the key drivers of the disease. By supporting these organizations through grant giving, networking and spotlighting their work, the Africa Outreach Project serves as a vehicle for communities to maximize their abilities to mobilize and empower themselves to prevent HIV. Charlize Theron, would you please join me on stage? <laughs> Thank you. Um, wow. This is a great honor. Thank you so much to the World Economic Forum for this award. There's a pretty hefty brain trust in this room right now. I feel like I'm getting smarter just by osmosis. In all sincerity, though, I feel incredibly honored to receive the Crystal Award tonight. I don't take for granted the opportunities that are awarded to me as an entertainer. I feel a certain uh, sense of responsibility to, to do something meaningful with those opportunities. As an artist, uh, being in the public eye, you sometimes find yourself in somewhat of a spotlight. I believe the best thing that you can do with that spotlight is to stand in the shadow of something important something you believe in, and maybe cast some light on that so that maybe the world can take notice. I can think of no bigger shadow that is cast than the one cast over my beautiful country of South Africa because of the AIDS pandemic. It is still continuing to ravage generation after generation. As many of you know, South Africa has the largest HIV population than any other country in the world at 5.9 million people. Sub-Saharan Africa alone accounts for two-thirds of all HIV deaths worldwide and is home to nearly three-quarters of youth living with the disease. As a South African and a UN messenger of peace, I have seen the devastation firsthand, which is why I made it my personal mission and the guiding principle of Africa Outreach Project to keep help to help keep the African youth safe from HIV. The legendary Yogi Berra once said, the future ain't what it used to be, and boy, was he right. The world has made huge strides when it comes to both HIV prevention and treatment, but we still have a long way to go. This fight is far from being over. With the reality of eradicating mother-to-child transmission, we are about to have our first AIDS-free generation. And I think that is incredible, what a, a, an incredible stride. But we still have to make sure that we support those children through their adolescence. We as a global community have to support them and make sure that young people have a better chance of, at having a healthy HIV-free life by giving them the resources and the skills and the life-saving information that they need to do so, we can change that. It's not too late to change the future. I really believe that. 
And by focusing on HIV prevention and by just keeping this global support alive for this fight, we can end AIDS. I will accept this award tonight in recognition of the very long road still ahead of us and also um, on behalf of all the communities and, and organizations who do all the hard work on the ground and who have dedicated their lives to the youth and to giving them a brighter future without AIDS. Thank you so much for this honor. Vic Muniz. Vic Muniz was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He lives and works in New York and Rio de Janeiro. He began his career as a sculptor, but oriented himself more to photographic reproductions and photography. His work has been exhibited in solo shows and global retrospectives in the most important museums and art centers around the world. Vic Muniz is involved in social projects that use art making as a force for change. One of these projects can be seen in a documentary from 2010 called Wasteland, about his work with Brazilian garbage pickers, which has been nominated for an Oscar. He also has developed education programs for Brazilian youth in partnership with NGOs and nonprofit agencies. In 2011, Vic Muniz was nominated Goodwill Ambassador by UNESCO. He is also a member of the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council on the Arts and Society. Vic Muniz, would you please join me on stage? <clears throat> I can't fight the impression that I'm always unprepared for a situation like this, but I guess I was born like that. I would like to thank the World Economic Forum for our grant as a person and as an artist. As a person who was always told that I could, often told that I could not live from, the, from ideas and from creativity. And as an artist, who, I'm often told that ideas, artistic ideas, don't lead to social change. Uh, there have been 25 years making art and dealing with the business of transformation. And you start by moving materials and combining them with ideas until that's, you just feel that that's not enough. I, I was born in Sao Paulo and raised in the slums outside Brazil. And my parents were only, a, you know, the first time they set foot in a gallery or in a museum was to see a work of mine. And the older I get, the more I feel that I'm making work for my mother. You know, for a contemporary artist, this is quite a, uh, something that I have to be courageous to say. But uh, in, I think um, the, the idea of using art as a, a, an element of inclusion, that making art something that's a right, not a privilege, or taking art from the glitzy realm of the auction houses and in the multi-million dollar purchases and sales has been like my agenda for the last 10 years. When I started to feel that, when I started doing shows and uh, exhibitions in Brazil, it wasn't enough, and I had to sort of work with that poor boy that I left there when I chose to come to the United States. Uh, since then, it's been a pleasure to come back to my country, to work with people, and to tell people that they can be, uh, they can live from ideas, and these ideas can lead to an enormous amount of change in the world. Um, and it takes me to amazing places like garbage dumps and favelas, and, and, and it's been a great, great adventure. Thank you very much. <clears throat> 